Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Tutvid.com. I forgot to do the finger throw. Uh, today we're going to talk about round trip editing, Lightroom to Photoshop, and then bringing that image back to Lightroom. There's a, two different ways that I like to do this. I'm going to show you both. I'm going to show you why I do them and some of the customization you can do here in Lightroom to make it maybe a little bit easier on you uh, to do this whole back and forth Photoshop Lightroom game. Um, we're going to talk about all of it. Before I get going, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. Link just appeared right up there on the top corner of the video. If you're watching this video on YouTube, that is. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I don't get into Lightroom in it, sadly. Um, but if you pick up a copy of the course, it helps support what we do here. It's probably one of the best ways you can help support what I do here on the channel and allow me to dedicate more and more time to the channel, creating more and better, and faster, and just cooler videos that are going to blow your mind and everyone else's mind. Uh, and that's that sounds pretty good to me. Um, but it all begins with uh, supporting the channel. And if you pick up a copy of the course, that's exactly what you're doing. You are also supporting the channel, by the way, just by watching this video. And this video is free. So let's get on with it and check out how to do some round trip editing here. Lightroom to Photoshop and back again. Uh, I got some photos here from a recent shoot. I uh, just love this black and white image. Um, but this was sort of like uh, fire. you fire off a shot and the flash doesn't go. And you just have this amazing soft light. And you do like this old black and white treatment. And then it's just like the jacket and everything just works. Uh, but I think I'm going to work with this image here. And we're going to send this over to Photoshop. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go with this shot. I like this shot a little bit more. We're going to bring this over to Photoshop by right-clicking on the thumbnail here. And I'm going to choose Edit In, Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. And what's going to happen is, well, exactly what you think. It's going to pop this image right over into Adobe Photoshop, which is going to take a second. Here we are. And it's just this underscore MG underscore 3301.CR2. Uh, it's a 16-bit image, which is great. And at this point, I can go ahead and do whatever I want. So I think I'm just going to, let's see, I'm going to go with like levels and I'm going to kill off a little bit of contrast. And then I'm just going to apply like a, a duo tone effect to this image. Um, just, you know, something that I'm, I'm really not going to be able to do very effectively in, um, in Lightroom at all. So I'm going to try to go for something crazy here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I don't know. I really shouldn't be being this picky. Because it really doesn't matter. Let's just go with this here. I'm going to hit OK. And we can just save our image. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm not even going to save it. I'm just going to close it. I'm going to go File, Close. And it's going to say, hey, would you like to save it? Actually, I'm going to hit Cancel for a second. But one thing you don't want to do is go Save As and just go and save this wherever you want. Um, because you're going to... Lightroom's not going to automatically pick up where you save it. Photoshop and Lightroom are working kind of hand in hand like two robots and they don't want the human interacting and messing things up here. So when you go and say, hey, save as, I'm going to save you on my desktop, Lightroom is going to be like, mm, file process workflow broken, not working. Uh, so you need to let Photoshop just save this in its own magic place and I'll show you where that is in a little bit. Uh, but you need to let Photoshop choose where to save this and when you hit save, it's not going to ask you where to save it. It's just going to go ahead and save it. Now note, it did convert this to a .psd. Remember, this was the .cr2, the raw file. Um, it was converted here to a .psd. Um, so we're going we're to talk about that also in just a second. So you would save it and then I probably should have just hit close because when you close it, you can choose to save it. Let's jump back over to Lightroom here and you can see we have two images. We have our duotone image and it says sure enough one of two and then our other original image right here. Um, now it's going to take a little while to load this image. It's a, it's a big old PSD. Uh, but we have that image back in a Lightroom and we can go to like the develop module and we can do all kinds of stuff to it. We can go ahead and increase or decrease, you know, warmth, cooling, whatever we want to do here to it. Uh, increase contrast, reduce contrast, whatever you name it, uh, all kinds of stuff you can do. And it'll work just like a, a regular old Lightroom raw file. Now there are some people who have pointed out to me, um, that uh, some of the back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, especially if you're getting a TIFF file, I've never done like the technical deep tests to see how much quality you lose. But, you know, if, you, if it gets converted to a TIFF file, yeah, you're not really working with the original RAW file again. Again, I'm not really like the epitome of the technical photographer. I'm more or less the guy who says, here, here's how the light works. Give me a camera that's good enough. I'd rather shoot the idea than worry about, you know, every little you know, bleeding detail of the uh, of the technical specifications of something. That being said, quality is pretty important. 
Um, but I think a TIFF or a PSD is going to hold up pretty well. Now, the reason that mine is a PSD coming back from Photoshop is because you can actually adjust your settings with regard to external editors by going to the Lightroom uh, menu and choosing Preferences. Now, if you're on the PC, I believe this would be in the Edit menu, Edit Preferences. Here on the Mac, it's Lightroom Preferences. And we have this external editing button up here. Now, you have two options, TIFF or PSD. I went with PSD when I initially set this up because it just felt right. You know, I don't know. I'm not really a TIFF kind of guy. Um, so I just, I switched it to the PSD, but I believe TIFF is the default. So I went with PSD and a color space of Profoto is what I wanted to work in. Profoto is the, the widest gamut that I know of. Um, and it's the gamut that Lightroom just kills it in. I also went with a bit depth of, a bit depth of 16 bits because if you're shooting raw, don't downsample to 8 bits um, unless you've got a computer that really can't handle 16. But if you can work at 16 bits, um, you're going to be really happy with yourself that you did. Uh, and then a resolution of 240 is what I roll with. And then uh, when it returns a file, it's going to uh, name it. So I went with custom name hyphen sequence. So I just go PS underscore edit and a start number. I'll just set it, reset it to one uh, is what I'll, I'll go with. So when I bring a file over to Photoshop, it takes the raw file and it's going to save it back to Lightroom as a PSD file, Profoto RGB 16-bit PSD uh, with a custom name of PS underscore edit hyphen, whatever number it is up to. So that being said, let's say I just want to get rid of this PSD. Well, I can right click and say, hey, remove from collection. But while I removed from the collection, it's not removed from my hard drive. See, if I right click on one of these images and I choose show in Finder uh, on the Windows operating system, I believe this would say show in Explorer. So we'll go show in Finder. It's going to bring up this big old folder of images here. Let me just move the sidebar out of the way. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have PS edit hyphen 27.psd. And if I preview this, hey, look at that. It's the PSD that we deleted or got rid of from Lightroom. Um, the only reason I point this out is because it's relatively important if you're going and creating these PSDs. I mean, look at this, 226 megabytes. That's a quarter of a gigabyte that you have in one PSD there. So if you're going to, you know, you're creating these duplicate files and a lot of them, uh, it's going to really eat up a lot of hard drive space. So I would just come in here and delete that PSD because I don't need it. It's not referenced in my Lightroom catalog anymore. Um, I don't care to keep it. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're moving and hustling through your images here in Lightroom. I can right click on this image and choose to edit it in Photoshop as well. And once I have it in here, it's very easy to go in and use the advanced healing brush tool to get rid of some of these little specks on her jacket and boom, send it right back uh, to Lightroom. I'm just going to close it without making any changes. I'm going to say don't save. Let's go back to Lightroom and notice that I didn't save it. I didn't do anything to it and we haven't made a duplicate of that image. But let's say we want to preserve the raw image um, when we transfer this over to Photoshop. We don't want to just say like, hey, we're locking into a PSD or a TIFF file. You do have another option here. If you right click on an image, you can say choose edit in and say, look, open as a smart object in Photoshop. Let's try that option and see what happens here. When I do this, you can see that I have my underscore MG underscore 3299 hyphen one, but I'm not getting the dot CR2. And over here in my layers panel, I have a smart object. Now, if I double click on this smart object, I get the camera raw editor. But the interesting thing about this is check this out. Look at the camera raw editor. 3712 plus 58 on the tint, 1.95, 81 of the contrast, all right? I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to jump back over to Lightroom for a second, and let's reference the original image. 3712 plus 58 on the tint, 195 on the exposure, plus 81 on the contrast. It's mimicking what the Lightroom editor is doing, and you've got it here in the Camera Raw editor. So you still have that original Camera Raw file. Now, I could apply to this. Let's just say, uh, I don't know, we want to come in here and add like a levels adjustment and go to the blue channel and pump some blue into the shadows for some reason, whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and choose File and just close this. Would I like to save it? Yeah, let's go ahead and save it and see what happens here. All right, let's jump back over to Lightroom. And sure enough, here in Lightroom, we have that duplicated image once more showing up, one of two and two of two. Now, if I right click on this and I choose to show it in the Finder, you can see that it is still a PSD. So what Lightroom is doing is it's taking the original RAW file and it's wrapping it in a smart object and then it's saving it back to Lightroom as a PSD. So the original RAW file is still wrapped within that PSD as a smart object. So the smart object is preserving the quality and the richness and the amazingness of that original RAW file 
uh, that we that we sh that we got out of our camera that we shot. Um, so that's really pretty cool. And if you like, right click on this and choose to. Uh, oh well, real quick, I should point out that when this uh, smart object comes back to or this PSD comes back to Lightroom, all of your settings are reset. And why is that? Because that raw file is wrapped within the smart object that's saved as the PSD. So technically, you're applying all of these adjustments to your PSD. So if I right click and I were to say, hey, edit in Photoshop as a smart object, it's going to wrap this PSD within a smart object. So we'll sort of have like a double PSD. There's nothing really wrong with that. It just depends on how you're editing your images. But just to wrap your mind around it, it's going to continually wrap uh, the, the rounds of editing, if you will, in uh, smart objects to preserve the integrity and the quality of that original image. So that to me is really kind of the way to go when you edit in Photoshop. Edit to open it as a smart object in Photoshop. You will preserve that original camera raw image that you got from your camera. And that's usually what you really, really want to do. Uh, but it also just points to the importance of learning how to work with smart objects in Photoshop, how to work non-destructively in Photoshop, because that's, you know, I mean, the essence of working non-destructively in Photoshop uh, has kind of the smart object ideal at heart. And that's really it. That is my uh, my workflow for shipping files from Lightroom over to Photoshop and then getting them back into Lightroom. Now, I should point out, if I'm beginning a project, I like to go, you got on the shoot, you capture your photos, and then I'll bring my photos back and I'll dump them into Lightroom where I can do all of the sorting, rating them, kind of figuring out what photos I want. I'll export a contact sheet from, like a PDF from Lightroom that I can ship off to the client so they can make their official picks. And as they make their picks, I will then go, and if a file needs to be taken into Photoshop, I take it into Photoshop. I like to do all the Photoshop retouching first. Lightroom, to me, is most powerful when it comes to straightening images, toning, color, sharpness, finishing grain, stuff like that. That's where Lightroom really shines. So I would rather do that stuff. That stuff to me should all be done after I'm doing all the pixel pushing, all of the moving of stuff around, any sort of liquefaction, any kind of like, hey, can you go and remove that car from the background? I'll do all that stuff first. That's all underlying, done at the PSD level, and then I'll bring that PSD back into Lightroom where I'll apply color toning and, uh, you know, exposure adjustments, contrast, temperature, you know, going to really tweak the curves and get just everything looking primo and make all those different changes that need to be made. So I like to do the heavy pixel pushing, retouching in Photoshop first and then bring it into Photoshop for the finishing color, tone, sharpness, grain type treatments that I like to use Lightroom for and really where Lightroom really shines. So Lightroom really shines when it comes to organizing your photos and getting them all pieced up and rated and sorted out. And then you take it over to Photoshop before you start applying toning and sharpness and all of that. Get all the heavy retouching done in Photoshop where it's needed and then bring those files back into Lightroom where you can then finish toning and adjusting and everything like that and then export your final files from Lightroom to be sent off to the client. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a little like on this video. Drop a comment down below if you feel so inclined and make sure you subscribe to this channel. That way you never miss another Lightroom, Photoshop, or photography tutorial in the future. How great does that sound for editing well, for, I should say, a complete editing workflow, Lightroom to Photoshop and back again, and wrapped in about 100 different smart objects, if you so choose, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.